الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تحلوا شعائر الله ولا الشهر الحرام ولا الهدي ولا القلائد ولا آمين البيت الحرام يبتغون فضلا من ربهم ورضوانا وإذا حللتم فاصطادوا ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم أن صدوكم عن المسجد الحرام أن تعتدوا وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب صدق الله العظيم. The ayah that I have just recited has a lot of beautiful messages for us. But I just like to touch bases on a very short portion of the ayah, which is towards the end of the ayah. And that is, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Extremely important rule that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned in Qur'an. Sometimes when we look at these words of Qur'an and these short words where very short advices from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, you just get lost that in such a short advice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have instructed us of all the goods of this world and how to protect ourselves from all the evils. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ This is it. This is the portion of the ayah that we will just try to understand very briefly in this short time. Which means, help each other in virtue. Help each other in righteousness. وَالتَّقْوَى And on piety. وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Never help each other in doing a sin, or in transgression, or doing wrong to others. Although even this short portion has two parts to it, helping each other in al-birr, in al-taqwa, and never helping anyone in ithm and udwan, in sins, and transgression, in wrongdoings, in hurting others, in doing anything that is wrong. I think we may even be just talking about the first portion of it, and that is تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Help each other in doing good, and in piety, in achieving whatever is good. With the whole system of morality and akhlaq that was taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we see it being very neglected, and in fact, in fact, even amongst those who are considered to be very high with morality, having no understanding of the concept of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or the concept of Islam regarding the akhlaq, regarding morality, regarding our behavior, regarding treating each other. This is one of those things that is forgotten or almost forgotten. And that is the concept of helping each other. Ta'awanu al birr. Ta'awan, helping each other. Sufyan ibn Ayyna, rahimahullah. One of the great scholars of Islam and he is of the Tabi'een. Explaining this ayah, Ta'awanu ala al-birr, just this portion of it. He says, 
Ta'awun al al-bir means three things. An ta'mal bi. Number one, that you, you, you yourself do the good things. It's not only that you are helping others to do it, you yourself do everything that is good. Your life is full of bitter, of only good. Just like Hajj al mabrur you try to do everything that is only good in that Hajj. If during that Hajj you do anything that is wrong, this is not Hajj mabrur Same thing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us to live a life that is mabrur, that is full of bir, just doing good. Number two, أَن تَدْعُوَ إِلَيْهِ You invite people towards doing good. Not only that you do it and keep it to yourself. تَدْعُوَ إِلَيْهِ That you invite people to do the good. Number three, وَتُعِينَ عَلَيْهِ And if you see someone doing it, then you help the person achieving it. It's not that I would like to do it myself, and then I don't like others to do the same thing. I don't like others achieving the same thing. If I can do something good, as soon as I find out that there is some other organization, there is another imam, there is another shaykh, there is another Muslim brother or sister who is able to do something similar or better, right away a feeling comes, you know, I don't want people to know about it. I would like to be on front, on top. Let everyone know that I'm the one who can do this. This is not ta'awun ala al-bir. This person does not want bir. This is the mistake that we make. We take the akhlaq and we feel that this is akhlaq, this is behavior, this is morality. But in reality, if you look into the person's heart, there is no akhlaq, it's only his own person, his nafs. That I would like to be up there. This is why when anyone else doing that type of work, we try to keep him behind us. No, you stay behind him. I can't help you. So, tu'ina alayhi, helping others who are trying to do the similar type of work and who are trying to do some good things. And the scholars have added one more thing to it, and that is, وَتَدُلَّ alayhi, That you show others the path towards achieving that good. Even those who are not doing it, you show them the way to it. You direct people towards doing the good. There is hadith in Sahih Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with some sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een. And a man approached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Ya Rasulullah, innahu qad ubdi'a bi. I lost my right, Ya Rasulullah. We get into the similar situation. It's not that we are talking about something that was only there 1400 years ago and never happens again. Ya Rasulullah, innahu qad ubdi'a bi. Ya Rasulullah, I lost my right. I cannot make it to my home anymore. Can you help me, Ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Inni la ajiduka, la ajidu ma ahmiluka alayhi. I don't have a right to give you. I don't have it myself at this time. That's the situation that I'm going through at this time myself. <coughs> and a sahabi that was sitting there right away, he jumped in and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I don't have it either, but I can tell him about a brother who may be able to help him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that would be very nice of you. So he told him that you go to such and such brother, and inshallah he will help you with it. And then he goes with him to make sure that he gets to the brother and he introduces this person to him, and that brother finally helped him. He gave him a right. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he found out about the whole situation at the end, that he took him there, introduced him, and then finally that brother helped him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this very special and a very important announcement to the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam. Addallu ala al khayri kafa'ili. A person who guides another person towards something good, he will be getting the reward as if he did it himself. So this brother who introduced the other brother to him, he is getting the reward as if he himself gave this person the right. <coughs> Addallu ala al-khayri kafa'ili. 
a person who shows others the right path of achieving anything good, helping others in any way, he cannot do it. Subhanallah, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not have anything to help this person with. And this Sahabi did not have anything either. But he was able to guide him towards someone else who may be able to help him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he got the full reward as if he did it himself, and the person who did it, he got the reward too. This is the concept of Sharia regarding helping. In fact, there is a very amazing hadith in Musnad Ahmad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِي as long as a person is helping his brother, his sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on doing this person's work behind his back, so all of his needs are being fulfilled, while he's just trying to, do the, uh, to help the other person. Of course, our help is very limited. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to find a way for you. I'm trying to find someone who can help you. As long as that's my worry, and I'm working in it, and I'm making calls, I'm running here and there, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fulfilling my needs and I will not be getting in these type of needs. Because of losing that concept of helping, putting our hands together, we find that every person is going through difficulties. Difficulty in every field of our life. Most of us, we have no knowledge of deen and we don't know how to get it because we don't have time. Many of us are not having any time to spend with our families. What's the solution? I can't find no solution to it. There are many of us who are struggling day and night to just make their living because they have large families. And they have to work. They have to provide their families. But because of that, they're missing a lot of things that they're supposed to do. And they find no solution to them for themselves. Many of us, who are not able to get the right education at the right time, are struggling with our lives. Just trying to survive one way or other and doing something and finally sometime the person finds himself at a dead end. He would like to bang his hand, head on the wall. No solution. He can find no solution to it. And we find ourselves always in similar situation. In a family. MashaAllah, all are doing well. One of the brothers is doing very good with some of his situation. The other brother in the same thing, he can't do it. But because of the concept, is not there of helping. The brother who achieved it is very happy that I did it. He's, he has no sympathy towards, uh, towards his brother. He has no feeling towards his brother who was not able to achieve it. That I wish if he would have got it before me, I would be happier. That that direction of life is gone. Let me give you a simple example of how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam developed that type of attitude, that type of understanding, that type of behavior among Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa of helping each other. No one finds himself at a dead end in this situation. Everyone feels, I can do all of these things. Umar radiallahu alayhi wa When he immigrated to Medina Munawwara, we know so these muhajireen, they left everything behind them. They did not have a single penny with them. They did not have a spare set of clothing with them. The only thing they have is the two sheaves that, that's covering their body. Nothing else that they have in their lives. These are the same people who own businesses over there. They were very well to do. They had jungles full of their cattle. But here, they don't have nothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course we know and it's a long story how he introduced Sahaba to each other, from one from Muhajirin and one from Ansar. And he created that Islamic brotherhood, that 
you are the brothers of each other. This muhajir will stay with you, you help him and he's going to help you. So Umar radiallahu anhu sits with his brother from the Ansar and he says to him, listen, we have two very important things to do. One is, we have to do, make our living and continue with this business that you had been running up to now. But the second thing that you have to do and I have to do too, and that is, now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in Medina. So we can't just neglect that. We have to learn the deen from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. What a beautiful solution both of them came up with. Okay? This is the business I have, which means this person had his farm. So you work in the farm one day, and I will spend that day with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next day, I will work, and you go and spend the day with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the end of the day, we will share the income and we will share the knowledge. SubhanAllah. Whatever we get from the business here, we share the profit. And knowledge that the person have gone and got from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will sit at the end of the day and we will discuss it and we will share that knowledge. Neither of them is losing anything. They both are making their living and they both are getting the benefit of the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and getting the knowledge of people. With the resources that we have today, just think how many people we can help. How many families we can help, not only individuals. But that concept is not there. This time. And therefore, it's nafsi, nafsi, it's only myself, myself. Let me get the maximum benefit out of it. Since we are not helping each other, everyone depends on his income. Whatever I make, I'll make my living and everything. I'll get every worldly benefit out of that. And this is why we find that we are really losing so much. We are losing so much because the sense of community is not there. The sense of togetherness is not there. In the same family, brothers and sisters, they are not helping each other. I'm on my way, you are on your way. Whoever will be able to make it better than others, that's it, he's out. I can do nothing. I have my own commitments. I have my own life. I have my own family. My brothers have no right to interfere with my life. Not only this, subhanAllah, not only about helping each other, even responsibilities are gone. Even my parents have no right of doing anything with my wealth. That's my wealth, that's my family. We need to realize that this is not everything that, okay, if I can make a good living, then I'm independent and I don't need anyone's help. See what we are losing. See how much we have got up to this age. We haven't even got the salah properly. We haven't even got to the, list of the Quran in our lives. Forget about getting, getting further with it. By introducing deen to others. And taking deen to other people. That's too far. We haven't even got these, these basic things in our own lives because we are too busy. And we are all by our souls. I'm the only earning member of my family. Why? Why am I so left out in this world that is full of people who smile to me every day? Whenever I see them, they shake hands with me and they hug me too. But why still I feel that I'm so left out in this world? Why I feel that I'm all by myself, I have to do everything for myself. What an important rule of Sharia this was. As it got neglected, we all are just by our souls. We don't know nothing about others. We don't know nothing about the needs of others. Not only we don't know, we don't even want to know about it. In fact, if I find out, this brother here came to seek some of my help. That is the last person that I would meet. Make sure that I create a situation where he cannot see me. We need to understand. In this life, the system, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the system of this world is that we all need each other. 
And if we don't put our hands together, our heads together, we don't get together, we are not going to be able to achieve anything. We will live as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I'm sorry, this is what Allah says. I'm only narrating it. That there are people who live in this life, ulaika kal an'am, they live like animals. Oh, only my life, my soul, my food. Where is my food? Where is better grass? Let me run there. And I find better grass somewhere else, and I just go and run over there. If I see another animal eating from it, if I have horns, then I'm going to beat up the other animal and get him out of that place. This is exactly the life that we see. At the end of the day, if I get a chance, I'll make up for all of my prayers at home. From Fajr to Isha. The person is very virtuous because he does, he does five prayers every day. At the time of Isha, he makes up for all of them. The whole thing is gone. The whole concept is, is gone. We need each other's help in everything. In educating our children. In bettering our souls. In achieving our dunya and achieving our deen. Imagine if Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam, a great prophet of Allah. And the reason I'm using his example, because we all know this is a prophet of Allah who always stayed away from world, from the worldly gain. He did not want to use anything out of it. This is the prophet of Allah who is known for his zim. He did not want to use nothing. He did not even want to build a house for himself, but he never did. He used to spend most of his time in the jungles. But this is the Prophet of Allah who one day had to announce. As Allah says in Qusurat al-Saf, it's very important when it comes from that Prophet of Allah and that's the reason Allah is mentioning in Quran. Isa alayhi salatu was salam announced, Man ansari ila Allah, who will help me for the sake of Allah? He doesn't want no dunya. He doesn't want food. He doesn't want anything. Allah has given him a responsibility. Can weigh the message of deen. Can weigh my message to the people. So therefore, he has to now. A person who never, who would never ask any person for anything. Now he is out and asking people, Man ansari ilallah, who will help me for the sake of Allah? Imam ibn Kathir rahimahullah says, Ansari ilallah means, Man yusa'iduni fi da'wati ilallah, who will help me to convey the message of deen to others. Message of Allah so that I can convey to the people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by one of the Sahaba Allah alayhi wa sallam. Who said, Ya Rasulullah, I would like to do something good in my life. What should I do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Look for people who are in desperate need and they're struggling, they are in hardship and go and help those people. Another Sahabi came, Ya Rasulullah, I need to do something good in my life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If you see a person who's doing some work, help that person in finishing his work. Or, and better than this would be that you find a person who is not able to do the work at all and you do the whole work for him. I would like to get something done in my backyard and my neighbor likes to get the same thing. I found a person who came and he did it in a very nice way and in a very inexpensive way. My neighbor did not find the person. I'm so happy, I'm celebrating. I look at my neighbor, I laugh, and I say, well, look, I got it. He didn't get it. He's plan he had been planning for two years. In six months, I got it. See, they could not finish the construction of their home in two years. I finished it in two months. Those people are trying to build their masjid for the last five years. We built it in six months. This is our situation. Oh, Ali Akhra. Or you go and do the whole work for a person who is not able to do his own work. This is instruction from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the Sahabi who would like, who wanted to do something good in his life. The people of Ansar, they got this title Ansar. Why? It's that helping hand. When Muhajirin are coming empty-handed, they said, "Ya Rasulullah, we will share everything with them." And we all know these type of hadith. 
Let me just read a small hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. Just to understand how these people of Ansar learn to help from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got a lot of wealth from Bahrain. So he said to the people of Ansar, he gathered the people of people of Ansar and said, Ya Ma'ashir al-Ansar. This is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. He said, I would like to distribute all of this wealth amongst you people because you people help a lot your brothers in Mahajirin and you spend a lot of money in your life for that sake. So I'm going to spend all of this for the people of Ansar. The reply from Ansar was, No, Ya Rasulullah, we do not like to accept it except if our people, uh, the, our brothers from Muhajirin will also get the same share. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa kept on insisting on them. No, you take it yourself because you spent a lot of money on these people and now these people have land, they have home and they got everything. And Ansar insisted till the end, No, Ya Rasulullah, if you just want to give it to us by ourselves without giving it to the Muhajireen, then please don't give it to us. We don't like to take it. Yes, if you give it to all of us, Muhajireen Ansar, then sure we will take whatever is our share. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was saying, No, I just like to do this favor to you people. And at the end, when he saw how much they're insisting, no, that he should give it to Muhajireen also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa decided to distribute it amongst only the fuqara, or whether they're of Muhajireen or Ansar. And till the end, they refused to take anything from that. Well, Ya Rasulullah, if we take it, we will get something. But these are our brothers. How they would feel, how they are going to feel about it. And of course, if you are giving it, then most of them, they won't feel bad. But even if one person feel bad, we don't want to see that type of feeling in the community. Ya Rasulullah, give it to all of us or don't give us. That's it. SubhanAllah. Help. Taking care of each other. Looking at the needs of others. It has been rated in the hadith. That a sahabi slaughtered a goat and he finds out that there is someone in his neighborhood that was in need. So he goes and he gives it to that brother, his neighbor, who was in need. He gives him some money, some, some meat of it. That person thought, there is another person who needs it more than me. So he gives it to his next door neighbor. The hadith says, it went through seven houses and at the end came back to the first person who had given it out. Every person is passing it to the next door neighbor, thinking that he may be in more need than I am. And finally, it comes back, comes back to the first person. Everyone knows the other people's needs. And they, no one even wants to know. If we just remember this, please. Wallahu fi awni al-abd. We will be going out looking for people in need that Allah is fulfilling your need as long as you are trying to fulfill the needs of your brothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfeeq to develop this habit of helping each other, this quality of helping each other and being happy to see that we are able to help others. And when we see others having more than us, better than us, we have the happiness in our heart that Alhamdulillah, this person is happy. I want to see people around me being happy, Alhamdulillah. And we thank Allah for giving it to those people, that they are happy people around us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to follow the akhlaq of the nabuwa, akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and learn these akhlaq from Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa lisa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat, wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbi.